Hey everybody, we're going to install a, a bung for an oxygen sensor and actually along with this uh, air fuel ratio sensor also. The engine's getting ready to be put into the vehicle. You can see all the wiring and so on. But on this LS though, we do have to install these bungs in there because we have the dual exhaust and the headers that are made. We are going to put in a regular zirconia style oxygen sensor which which the computer itself can acknowledge and that's what it came with but we're also going to put in a air fuel ratio sensor for tuning purposes difference between those two the oxygen sensors and the air fuel ratio sensors here's a voltage chart and on this oxygen sensor itself then uh, he has the ability only to measure 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio he does not know the difference anything above it or below it but it is of a yes or no signal hence the reason for the down below on this chart you can see the 11 to 1 12 to 1 13 to 1 14.7 to 1 and at that 14.7 to 1 that's where this oxygen sensor will either make 200 millivolts or make 800 millivolts within that 800 millivolts meaning uh, 0.8 volts on that. At 0.8 volts it's considered the system's considered to be rich. At 200 millivolts the system's considered to be lean. Of course performance wise 14.7 to 1 is not our optimum number. We'd like to be down around 11.8, 11 11.7, 11 12 to 1 for safety reasons and so on like that. But there's no way that a standard oxygen sensor itself can acknowledge that. So that's why we're going to install a air fuel ratio sensor, which is a linear type sensor. It is not a voltage generator as the standard oxygen sensor. This guy is actually a resistor within itself. And how this resistance system works is if you take the box of the PCM, and the PCM of course uses 5 volts to apply to the individual circuits, and with this right below the first resistor that's in this circuit below the 5 volts you'll see an X well that's where internally in the PCM they can acknowledge the voltage being produced there now of course on a simple series type circuit if I have two resistors one above the X one down at the bottom which becomes the air fuel ratio sensor the voltage in between of those will change as the second resistor in the system changes its resistance. With that, if both resistors was equal to each other, as in a 2 ohm and a 2 ohm, we would see actually 2.5 volts on that one wire being applied to the air fuel ratio sensor, and 2.5 volts would be acknowledged inside the PCM itself as the resistance changes in that sensor then of course we can uh, identify anything from zero volts to five volts within that system hence if we look down a little bit further on this chart then you can see the lower line itself then has our air fuel ratio and uh, usually about 10 to 1 all the way up to 22 to 1 an air fuel ratio can possibly read then and that gives us the ability to not go leaner than 17 and a half to 1. Anything leaner than 17 and a half to 1 is going to be a, could create a cylinder misfire. There's not as many molecules of gasoline. And just like a fire in the woods or so on like that, the fire jumps from treetop to treetop. Well, the fire from the spark plug jumps from molecule of gas to molecule of gas. And leaner than 17 and a half to 1 that fire might not continue to propagate against the cylinder. 14.7 uh, to 1 is going to be your cleanest with all of our five gases that come out of our tailpipe. But then again, we'd like to be down around 11.7, 11 11.8, .7, 11 .8, 12 to 1 on that. With this, if you look at the 12 to 1 air fuel ratio, we can actually have then a dedicated voltage that would represent that. Hence, on the left side, you will see 0 to 5 volts, and we can get a voltage produced off on that X in that above pull-down circuit. And, of course, a rich mixture is going to provide a high voltage, and then the leaner we go, it will create a lower voltage on that. Now, usually, 
a half a volt or less is considered a diagnostic trouble code and anything more than four and a half volts is considered a diagnostic trouble code hence saying then the oxygen sensor or air fuel ratios showing high voltage or the oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio showing low voltage so that's your parameters that at least for diagnostic purposes but that's basically how an air fuel ratio sensor works and again it'll give us the exact air fuel ratio on this on this V8 engine then on this LS number seven cylinder is usually the one that can cause a lean condition so I'm going to install a bung in the left side header then so that it can possibly read any conditions such as that. This is very simple to put this in. The bung assemblies that you can purchase. This one I got from Summit Racing. You can see how it has an undercut on it to slip down in the pipe. Measured it out. It comes out to 875 thousandths, which is 7 eighths of an inch. So with this I do have a drill bit that will uh, cut out 7 eighths of an inch and we're going to put him in this outlined area right there for purposes of fitting it to this engine. You can see the other hole that I've already put in for purposes of the original oxygen sensor that the PCM can acknowledge on that. Converting it over to just an air fuel ratio sensor is not going to happen though. You need a separate monitoring device for that. So let's go ahead and get our 7 8 hole in that. Uh, sometimes we feel that these 7 8 holes can be difficult to do, but let's do one right here then. And then we'll weld it in place. So if I take a pilot drill, and I bring this guy over here, and an X marks the spot, we get a hole drilled through this guy. here that you see then that actually has the different sizes the whole way up through it works fairly nice for this I'll let, use this a lot for air conditioning hoses and so on and it'll also fit into a 3 8 drill then because of the undercut on this where like a 7 8 bit could possibly only be 7 8 or need a half inch drill this one will work well I like putting these or having the exhaust system in place as I'll show you here. You can see the radius that's available that this can swing back and forth because of the round exhaust system. So if you can have it in place, you can get it to where you've got good clearance, to where it's not over rubbing against it and so on like that, causing it to corrode or fret away, if you will, on that. And it's as simple as then just taking a MIG welder, getting lined up on the height wise of this, and tapping it in place. On opposite sides. And there we go on that. With it tacked in place, we're ready to do a continuous weld around the hole outside of it. I did use an old oxygen sensor for the reason that maybe that high voltage could cause some damage to it. So this is just an old one that I had in a uh, bucket or so on. And then you can see of course that this guy is 
screws right out of there. And nice clean threads along with that, right down in that unit there. This bank will have one oxygen sensor. This other header over here, we've got two holes in it, one for the oxygen sensor and one for the air fuel ratio sensor. I did put the air fuel ratio sensor in a position that would be easy access, that I could take it out. That way I could use it for tuning purposes, maybe on another automobile.